this video I'm going to show you how to paint awesome red space marine armor using this new 9th edition Assault Intercessor. I wanted to take the release of the Indominus box as an opportunity to continue the Eviad and Meta videos because there's still a few chapters open that you wanted me to do and that I haven't done yet. The goal of the Eviad and Meta video was to show you that it's not all that impossible to go above the heavy metal style and maybe spark the desire to make your toy soldiers a little prettier than you thought was possible. So in the spirit of the Eviad and Meta videos, I tried to compile a few tips and tricks into this video and show a few approaches that are beginner friendly, but also give enough instruction to those of you wanting to push their abilities and learn something new. Let's address the elephant in the room here. I set out to paint the Blood Angel, but I wanted to make it interesting and I wanted to put my own personal preference into it. It's all about the two P's, the PP, put your PP in. Whether you want to paint an army or you want to paint single figures, always make them your own. There's already so many of them out there that look exactly the same. And I get the appeal of a pure red flood on the table. But when I look at a space marine or any figure really that is the same color from head to toes, I just want some elements in there that break the monotony and add personality as well as readability to the figure when you pick it up and look at it. So I started to search for Blood Angel artworks and I was pretty set on a black chest eagle. I didn't want to do gold because for this mini I was not going to use non-metallic metal and I don't really like to paint true metallic gold. If you want to paint true metallics or non-metallic gold on your trims and eagles, I have videos for that. You can find all my available videos through the index on my website by the way. I also wanted black armor trims on the shoulder guards because it separates the major armor parts nicely. And then of course there's this assault marine artwork with white shoulders and I was pretty sold on that. Not quite realizing that I just created a blood raven. Well damn. I later embraced some of the iconography and markings of the blood ravens simply because they were something new and I wanted to try using multiple decals over each other to achieve the effect. I did a little more research on how to maybe justify my choices but during that I realized why should I justify anything and incidentally I stumbled over this guy who simply gets it. So let's start this tutorial about how to paint red armor and I'm confident that you will get new ideas whether you want to paint blood angels or blood ravens as it's the same approach with only a few exceptions. I already have a tutorial on how to paint the more metallic looking red, that's why I wanted to do a more saturated color on this one. I'm applying a base coat of Mephiston red. You can of course do it with the brush, I'm using the airbrush to speed things up. I'm mixing a shade color from Rhinoxide, Nagaroth Knight, some black and the Mephiston red. I experimented a bit with the mix until it was dark enough. I'd normally apply this with an airbrush from below, but I wanted to show that you can also apply this with a brush if you don't own an airbrush. So I'm adding this shade layer to all the lower parts and everything facing down. Don't rush this. You want to make sure that this layer is applied very evenly. A lot of people just apply a wash and are disappointed when it looks spotty and not clean enough. You need to take your time with washes and control where they go, unless you don't care for the result. I also use this mix to wash all the recesses of the mini to create more depth. I let this layer dry and added a few more controlled and confined layers to areas I wanted to shade more, like the underside of the knee pads and areas curving down and also the very deep recesses, like on the chest plate here. At this point I also painted in all areas I wanted black. Personally I'm using Chimera Colors black, but you can use any black you own.
Then it was time to bring out the saturated red again, and I'm starting to clean up all the edges. If you want to use my color recipe for edge highlighting only, I suggest you do this step and the next one, where I clean up my midtones again by re-adding layers of Mephisto red, and then just edge highlight with the brighter colors I'm using. The goal of this video is to teach you something regardless of your skill level, so I want to push your limits a bit on this one to achieve better results. However, like I said, you can also use the basic ideas behind this and apply them to quicker paint jobs. As you can see, blending reds together is rather easy. The value step is not a big one and you can use a rather opaque consistency like I did to bring back out the saturation with Mephiston Red. How do you know where to bring out the red again? Well, anything that faces up should be bright because we are working with a senator light and when you look at the miniatures straight from above, you see exactly the areas that would catch light. We can also bring up some parts that would catch either bounce lights from the ground or that we simply want to define because otherwise it would just be a boring large surface. The first step is always to define the edges. This also applies to my first highlight color which is Evil Sun Scarlet. Again I was also starting to define the edges before I filled in the senator highlights, covering less area than I did with the Mephisto Red. I kept repeating the process on all shapes and edges I wanted highlighted and I painted in reflections to make wider areas like the middle section of the armor a bit less boring. And even if you are aiming for higher quality results, especially on Space Marines, edge highlights are always an important part of the process. Using my pigment pushing technique, I directed my brush strokes towards the brighter area as I highlighted, to avoid stain marks and to get clean blends. On these regular shapes I highlight up the main reflection and add secondary reflections next to them. I defined a few edges more dramatically. For my next highlight color I mixed a medium skin tone and flesh kits yellow and added it to the Evil Sun Scarlet. Remember, I said I'm aiming for a warm color which can be achieved by adding yellows to your highlights. Again, I started by defining the edges to increase the overall contrast and the readability of the elements of the mini. Then I was filling in the highlights on the actual volumes and shapes. Again, edge highlights covering less area than the layer before and then defining the inside and making the overall shape brighter. Also covering less area than before. The skin tone is a salmon color that is not a huge value step up and this way it's easy to control highlights. It's difficult to use white to highlight reds because not only does it shift the color unnaturally towards pink, it also is such a large value step. You will probably end up with chalky results and that's frustrating. We are rushing through how I define all the single elements a bit here, but I need to keep the pacing of the video up because that's how YouTube works. As usual, if you want to see the longer tutorials where I dive deeper into all the reasons behind what I do, you will be able to find all the elements as individual video tutorials on my Patreon. One thing I want you to notice is how I use the brush as a tool in different ways. Sometimes I'm painting on lines to underline how reflections work on a cylinder, other times I dab on dots of more opaque color on areas I want brighter right away. There isn't just one or two distinct ways you can apply paint. You can combine the way you apply the paint with different color dilutions and so on. Don't forget to also highlight these inverted edges, like here on the helmet. For the last highlight I was adding a bit more of the flash kits yellow and I'm adding another layer of paint on all edges facing up. These inverted edges... and all the shapes I defined, like that reflection line on the cylindrical shapes that make the armor of the arm. 
Now, before we continue, let me give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Skillshare. And before you skip ahead, let me quickly tell you why I think Skillshare is exactly for you. And the reason is, it was also exactly the thing for me. You're watching my videos because like me, you love to learn new things, things that you enjoy. And Skillshare is all about that. For example, you can learn how to take better pictures and not just by getting tips that will work in one particular situation. No, there's classes that will teach you from the ground up and that will empower you to make your own decision. Just like I always try to do with my videos. I found so many enjoyable things to try on Skillshare, like this class on color composition and how to work with complementary colors or this new illustration class with Jazza. And the fun thing is these classes take me out of my niche of miniature painting, but at the same time, give me new ideas to implement back into the hobby. So I'm happy to tell you that the first 1000 people that click the link in the description can get a free trial version of Skillshare Pro. And the offer also includes the possibility to keep going after the trial ends for less than $10 a month. Any trial sign up also directly supports me. So if you ever thought about joining Skillshare and checking out what they have to offer, why not help me pay the rent in the process? Next I was highlighting the black parts, like the Aquila and the pauldron trim. The first step is to mix a bit of Incubi darkness into my black, as it's always easier to start highlighting off of a surface that isn't completely black. Covering every single feather, I was trying to leave the underside of the feathers black so I don't have to darkline them afterwards. I'm going to gradually add bright skin shadow to my base color. You can use any mid-tone skin color. I'm using a Reaper color because I simply don't own a single Games Workshop skin tone. You can see that I'm adding a more covering layer on the inner row of feathers and I highlight the outer row only halfway. That way I'm building up a more global gradient on the wings before I start outlining the feathers. Which you can see me start doing here. I'm doing a few more steps gradually adding more of the skin tone and repeating the process always covering less and less area. There's two reasons behind using a skin tone to highlight black. The first one is that the end result is going to look slightly red depending on how much we want to push the highlights up and the second reason follows the same logic we used when highlighting the red. The value step is simply smaller than mixing in white or a bright gray and it gives us more control over what we do. With the last highlight step I'm also defining the outline of the inner row of the feathers. I was picking a highlight spot for the main highlight on the trim of the shoulders and I used the same process to highlight them. The edge highlights are always wider than the reflection. And I'm also putting in an inverted edge highlight with the same directional alignment as the main highlight. In the result you can see the slight sheen of skin tone as I brought the color a lot higher than on the eagle, which harmonizes really well with the red armor as I said. As a last step I'm also defining the round shape of the right knee pad. I already had the pauldron colors blocked in, as you saw in some previous shots, so here's what I did for them. I added a base layer mix of English uniform and pale sand. To highlight the shapes up I was simply adding more pale sand and applying the first layer of that highlight I realized that the base color was a bit too dark. So I made the whole pauldron brighter and I used pure pale sand to highlight the round shapes by pushing the pigments towards my brightest spots with every layer. I also added a line highlight to the edge closest to the armor trim to increase the edge contrasts. Using a mix of pale sand and white, I added a last highlight step using the same method. Once that was done, I added a layer of varnish to the pauldron because I wanted to work with decals and I did not want to destroy what I painted up until now. After that was try, I cracked out the decal sheet that came with the Indomitus box and using Microsoul and Microset, I applied a Blood Angels character symbol. I have a video where I describe how to use decals and how these products help linked in the description. After the symbol was in the right place and properly dry, it was still too glossy as you can see and since it's raised above the surface of the paint, it would get ugly marks from paint collecting there moving forward. That's why I applied another layer of matte varnish to get rid of the shine 
and normalize the levels of both surfaces. It's a pretty neat trick and now we can crack on with the painting. Using pale sand, I'm adding chips and scratches to the chapter symbol. Remember, the Indomitus Crusade is going on for a while at this point, and we want this to reflect on a brave space marine. It's also a great way to give your miniatures a bit of personality and make them feel alive on the table. I'll do a separate video on veteran and chipping and how to give your 9th edition Space Marines a more battle-hardened look. So don't forget to subscribe for more videos and while you're at it, you can also follow my Instagram to stay up to date with what I'm currently painting. I realize that I can save so much time on freehands using this method and also apply the skull on the knee pad and some more smaller decals to add additional detail. Don't get me wrong, I love freehands, but let's face it, they are stressful to do and if you are inexperienced, you probably won't get the crispness that these decals have to offer. And with this method, it won't even look like you were using decals because the result is just great. Using some inks that would give me the color I wanted, mixed with a bit of Acrix Earth shade to keep the glossiness down, I was painting some weathering that also doubles as shading. As you can see, the ink runs straight into the recesses, but I'm also glazing on layers further up, gradually staining the surface of the pauldron. It really does not matter if there's some staining, as it is supposed to represent weathering. And Grime obviously doesn't care about smoothness. I caught a bit of a decal buck and I wanted to experiment a bit more. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I got inspired by some of the Blood Raven's heraldry, so I added veteran markings, repainting a black Templar cross decal, and adding Roman numericals on top of this. Normalizing them both with the matte varnish and painting on scratches, weathering and grime the same way I did before. I base coated all the pouches in English uniform. I wanted to do them leather colored and English uniform is a great base color for a variety of textures like wood, paper and also leather. For the highlights I mixed in a bit of pale sand and I highlighted the edges but also added scratches and texture to the surface, making it look used and aged in the process. It doesn't matter if everything looks very desaturated right now, we're going to add back some saturation later. As a last step I added some more highlights with pure pale sand. Once I was happy with the texture I used some inks to add back intensity and contrast. I applied one layer of burnt sienna to all of the surface, also covering the scratches and edge wear. As you can see, this gives back a lot of liveliness to everything it touches. With the next layers, I added more burnt umber to make the surfaces darker and looking a bit more like leather. I was leaving out most of the scratches while doing that so that they stayed bright. The result was really shiny as you can see, but I wanted to add some Agrix Earth shade still to make some parts even darker. That also fixed the shine intensity and just to make sure the leather was only a little bit satin, I added a wash of Agrix over all of the surfaces. And boom, pretty matte, easy fix. For Chainsword, I wanted something that made it stand out, so I decided to go for Hazard Stripes. I wasn't sure about how saturated I wanted to start these, so I applied a base color of a mix of Ice Yellow and Uriel Yellow. But ultimately, I added one layer of pure Uriel Yellow to make the base color more saturated. Then I added Black Stripes and I made sure they were equally spaced out and left me with equally wide Yellow Stripes. Using my base mix I was adding wear and scratches. Of course edges would scratch up first so I started there and then moved inwards. Alternating between a chipping pattern and scratches I continued doing this until the black looked pretty beat up. Then to add both saturation and contrast I glazed on the scrag brown towards the hilt a few thin layers on top of each other does the trick. To clean everything up, create more contrast and readability, I used a mix of the base color that leaned more towards the ice yellow to clean up the edges of the sword. Here's some shots of additional detailing I did on the black parts like the straps 
at the connective parts of the armor. Knowing that this edge would be the brightest one because it's facing upwards, I started to define it with a bit of a messy brush stroke, leaving small bits of black to shine through. I then defined the adjacent side of the gun getting brighter towards the lower edge and staying dark next to the brighter edge I just defined. I used a more sketching style and didn't care that much about blending. The lines and dots that I'm adding are blended together into a gradient by our brains anyway, and at the same time we perceive it as textured material. I was adding more and more of the skin tone and added highlights in the same way, covering less and less area. I'm putting some extra effort into making the edges brighter to have them stand out a bit more. In general, I want them brighter than the rest of the side of the gun. I'm gradually alternating between highlighting the gradients further and making the edges brighter to find a pleasing contrast level. Applying two thin layers of Akrex Earthshade increases the depth of the black and makes it feel more lively and at the same time it blends the rougher gradients together. I'm using the same technique on the back of the chainsword that I left black. I pick out a spot where I want the main highlight to sit, in this case roughly the middle. You could probably pull it up a bit more towards the upper end thinking about it now. But the main point is that, again, I was creating the gradient with opaque layers, overlapping with lines and dots and general texture. I also did that on the casing of the motor of the sword. I felt like I wanted to maybe do that in metallics, but to be honest, I didn't want to spend too much time on it, so I kept it low-key black. To paint a few metallic parts I wanted on the mini, I was using my trusty Vallejo airbrush acrylics. I was using steel, which is a really dark shade, so I didn't have to shade these parts a lot. I also covered the teeth of the chainsword and the pipes on the helmet. I gave both parts a black wash, which I didn't film for the teeth, but I'm sure you get the idea. You can see me do it on the helmet parts. Then I added a highlight of dark aluminium. This kept the highlights more muted and not too bright so they wouldn't compete for attention. The eyes are quickly defined with an outline of black and then layered them up to an opaque white. Then using a mix of hex rate flame and contrast warp lightning, because on their own they felt not intense enough or too intense respectively, I added layer after layer to the eyes. I made sure to leave out a spot that I wanted brighter, almost like the reflection dot of a lens in the top right corner. Painted differently, but this is a quicker approach that works for tabletop and showcase levels in my opinion. I really love painting backpacks because you can divide them into distinct geometrical shapes, so I made sure here the shapes were defined in a credible and pleasing way. You can study reflective objects to give you ideas on how these reflections work. For the exhaust winds and rivets on the backpacks I used dark aluminium and I shaded them with watered down black for a stark contrasting effect. Using dark aluminium again, I cleaned up the edges and added a few highlights. Then it was time to add the backpack to the mini and I added a tiny dot of black here and there on parts that I wanted darker or more contrasting.
I wanted a small plinth and I used a sort of dowel for it. I made sure it was the same size as a gaming base, so you can see everything I do here can be done on a gaming base. I clipped off the mini from a high-tech miniature holder and left a bit of the wire so I could pin it into the base and dry fitted it to find a proper position. Felt like the jump pose would feel more dramatic if I added a bit of a slope or a platform elevating him above the main level of the ground. To make it more interesting, I glued a skeleton to the base and then drenched the rest of the base in superglue and sprinkled some dried earth on and dabbed off the excess. One mistake I made was not to spray the plinth black before gluing the already painted mini to the base. That took a good bit of masking with plastic bags to compensate for. Once everything was primed, I slapped a few different colors on and highlighted it by dry brushing with pale sand. Then I gave it a quick wash with burnt umber to bring back out shades. To get some color variation back, I mixed various pigments with water and just spread them out all over the base. You can mix together different colors of pigments really easy and mixing brighter and darker pigments makes for interesting earth effects. In some places I dabbed on some of the umber again and the last step was to highlight back up the skeleton. And that was the quick base done. And this is the result. Let me know in the comments if you like it. Thanks a lot to all my patrons for the support and for making these videos possible. Thanks for watching, stay creative and I'll see you in the next video. But when I look at a space marine or any figure really that is the same color from head to toes, I feel like...